So what we have here is a manifestation of the world's first porta home. So we have a porta potty that is a wheelchair accessible porta potty that's mounted atop a trailer and a bunch of other goodies on board. Hi, I'm TK Devine and this is my porta home and our aim is to tour this around Los Angeles to prove that tiny living on wheels is possible in the big city. Join us, take a tour of the space. We've got an incredible number of Housing Insecure College students in Los Angeles. One in five community college students, one in 10 Cal State students. The numbers are astronomical. Here are folks that are looking to put themselves through a better future and we can help provide that by taking care of one of the basic lower hierarchy of needs, which is absolutely shelter, yeah. This is infrastructure free, so that means we don't need any hookups. We can roll onto a property, any property, anywhere, and within a day be fully self-contained. So we've got a 400 watt system of solar panels on the roof. That solar power will run our air water generator, and that's what allows us to stay off grid uh, for water. So the air water generator is able to take molecules from the air and convert them into water molecules. So that'll generate 10 gallons a day. <laughs> I mean, it might be magic. <laughs> Technological advancement magic. There's hot water. We've got the hot water heater right here. Um, so we should be able to um, have a nice warm shower and instead of you waiting for the water to get hot There's a button that turns from blue to red that'll let you know when the hot water is ready for you So then you can allow it to come out of the faucet So you're not wasting water while you wait and the sink and the shower They all empty through a filtration system that then will go up to the rooftop garden and water the plants That means we don't have to hook up to sewage. The next component of sewage of course is the toilet itself so that's a composting toilet, which takes the waste through different systems that help to break down the waste so that by the time you reach the composting bucket, two to four months later, it's basically paper waste. Well, plenty of room for all of your basic needs and maybe a little bit more. If you like to cook, your range top here should take care of all your basic needs. So what we've got here, um, we've got a bunch of little compartments here. So if you come home, you got your computer bag. Um, you've got that available here. So this acts as a bench, but if you don't want to sit or if you need to stow stuff away, um, you've got plenty of space right here to put extra bags or things that you want kind of out of sight and out of mind. If I want to enjoy a good meal and I want to be inside, this folds down as a table. But what's on the other side of this? That's the question. Our Murphy bed. All right, my six foot one frame can fit rather comfortably here. It's a comfortable space, um, and we tried to uh, we tried to add little implements that would make somebody feel at home. Uh, notice there are a lot of um, little little crannies for people to put stuff. This cost us when you're looking at uh, materials and labor. It costs us twenty to twenty five, and. Uh, and I think we can build something when we build it to scale for 10 to 15. So that's a lot cheaper than you know living in a studio apartment. What we've seen is residential backyards that would house this specific unit number in, in around half a million. That's a lot in Los Angeles, a lot of yards that could fit a structure like this. And I think it's worth thinking about how to use that space wisely, how to do it respectfully, and how to do it in a way that benefits all parties involved. Our aim is to bring communities together um, by housing those who need it most and offering a benefit to landowners as well. Uh, we think that there are a few people out here that will participate in a program like this out of the goodness of their heart, but we do think there, there requires a financial incentive and we do think a, a tax break would really help for that. Um, but we also think that putting some legislation around this that supports an idea like this, provided it's done in a certain way, um, can really start to ease the crisis in a way that can be helpful for all involved. When I moved here in 2010, uh, <laughs> the rent was less than half what it is now and the place I moved into in Venice Beach. Um, it was a thousand dollar apartment that is now well over two thousand. So in just eight years, and that change happened very quickly, that change happened within two or three years, um, I was priced out of living in that space. So. I know firsthand the, uh, the struggles of, of affordable housing, finding affordable housing, and, and being able to meet your basic needs in, in, in the city. As the city changes, I think a lot of people need alternatives for affordable housing, and tiny living can be one of them.